Hello and welcome. I'm Michael and today I'm going to be giving you a complete overview of the brand new Akai Fire controller that's just been released today. This video will go into detail about all of the controls, all of the features, functions and main modes of the device. But if you're brand new to FL Studio, I would recommend watching my FL Studio Complete Beginner Guide. It's about 15 minutes long and will get you completely up and running with the software so that you can use this device. I've split it into two videos like that so that this video is for people who have a little bit of knowledge about FL Studio and want to find out more about this device specifically. So let's get right into the video. I'm going to structure this video by giving a brief overview of the device and each of the modes. And then after that, I'm going to go into a lot more detail about each of the functions of the modes. So don't worry if it seems like I'm glossing over it at the start. I just want to give an idea for what the whole device can do. So the first thing that will probably catch your attention are the 16 by 4 RGB soft touch steps. The function of this pad bank changes depending on which mode you're in. In step mode, these represent steps on each channel of the channel rack. For instance, these ones here in red matches the kick in the channel rack. These ones in orange match the hi-hat. And you can add steps by pressing and remove them by pressing again. The function of these pads changes depending on which mode you're in. Let's start down here and work around the device. So down in this corner we have our transport controls, record, pause, play, and a button to change between pattern mode and song mode. And these mimic the FL Studio transport controls. Underneath each control, there's another control. So this one that says pattern song also says metronome. And this is to do with the shift button here. So if you press and hold the shift button, you have access to the controls underneath each of these buttons, which open up more modes and features. Moving over to the left, we have an alt and a shift button. And these two buttons are incredibly important for controlling FL Studio and this device. For instance, if you hold Alt and rotate the selection encoder, you can select a different channel in the channel rack. And if you press Shift and rotate the selection encoder, you can select a different mixer track. Over to the left again, we have the four mode buttons. So Step, Note, Drum, and Performance Mode. Step Mode, the one that I've just shown, controls the channel rack in FL Studio. Note mode controls any VST instruments you have. Drum mode controls any FPC that you have selected inside FL Studio so that we can do finger drumming. And performance mode lets us launch clips in real time, and I'll be demonstrating that at the end of the tutorial. Moving up, we have mute and solo buttons. Now these are most useful in step sequence mode. Again, these mimic FL Studio, so if they're green, it means they're on, and if you press them and the light goes out, that means that the channel is muted. For instance, I'm going to play the pattern, and then I'm going to mute the kick and the snare. And underneath mute, you can see that it says solo, and you need to press shift to access this solo function. If I press play, I'm going to solo the hi-hats. Moving further up the device, we have channel, mixer, user 1, and user 2 banks. Now these relate to these four rotary encoders, and they decide which parameters are going to be changed. For instance, in channel mode, these control the volume, pan, filter, and resonance of a specific channel. I'm going to select the snare by pressing Alt and rotating the selection encoder until it says snare. I'm going to solo the snare and just adjust some of those parameters. Volume, down, up, pan to the left, to the right, adjust the filter, and open the filter back up again. But these don't only control the channel parameters. In mixer mode, they control the volume, pan, low and high EQ of whichever mixer track you have selected. For instance, I have the kick selected, so if I press play, I can adjust the parameters on the mixer. I'll adjust the EQ, low EQ, less low end. You also have access to user banks 1 and 2, which you can assign to any parameters in FL Studio. 
Moving over to the top middle of the device, you have these two pattern buttons. You can use these to browse through your patterns or create a new pattern. And then we have this LED screen, which gives us visual feedback about which channel we have selected, for instance, channel kick. And then it also gives us information about the parameter we're adjusting. Then we have the browser button. So if you press this, it will light up red, and then you can use the selection encoder to navigate through your browser. You can press the grid button here to audition your sample. And when you found a sample you want, you can press the selection encoder and open it up in the channel rack and load plugins exactly the same way by just selecting it and then pressing open in new channel. The selection encoder at the top of the device is incredibly important. It helps us navigate FL Studio, select our channel or mixer insert, and just gives us a lot of control over the device. And finally, the grid buttons let us extend our pattern length, which I'll explain in step mode. Before we go any further, I'd just like to say you can adjust the brightness and contrast of the pads. So if you press Alt and adjust the volume parameter, you can make the pads brighter or dimmer and adjusting the pan changes the saturation of the pads. This is great to make it match your environment. And I have a video linked just here with a lot more tips and tricks like that. The first mode that I want to talk about is step mode. You can access it by pressing step here. This mimics the channel rack inside FL Studio. So I'm just going to clear my steps by pressing on them and show you how this works. You can only see four channels at a time. So you can use the selection encoder to navigate up and down to highlight a different four channels. And you can use the grid buttons to extend your pattern length. You can press a step to add it and you can press again to remove it. Here I have a kick and a snare. And you can see that the playhead follows along. As I mentioned a moment ago, we can mute steps and solo them. We can also select a step by pressing Alt and pressing the mute or solo button beside it, or by using the selection encoder and scrolling. We can then adjust the channel properties such as volume and pan. Let's add some hi-hats to the pattern. So you can press them in or you can simply draw them across like that. Add an open hi-hat. As well as changing the channel properties of volume and pan, you can actually adjust the properties on an individual step. If I hold down a step, I can adjust its individual velocity in the graph editor and its individual step pan. This is great for adding a little bit more realism to hi-hats. So if I hold down two steps at a time and adjust their velocity, it adds a little bit more realism to it. And it doesn't just stop with the velocity. We can also change things like step pitch. So if I hold down a step and rotate the selection encoder, I can change the pitch of a step. I can also hold down two at the same time and adjust them. Extending your patterns is straightforward. You simply press the grid button once and it will take you to the next 16 steps where you can start programming however you like and you can see that the playhead lets you know where you are. If you want to adjust the velocity of a lot of steps, what I would suggest doing is using accent mode. So if you press shift and accent, you'll enter accent mode. And now if you set the default velocity, you can change what all of the steps will be put in as. So you can see that they're a little bit lighter and they're much more quiet. To exit accent mode, press shift and accent again, and then your steps will be back to full velocity. The next mode that I want to talk about is note mode. So if you press note here, it will take you into note mode, which gives you three octaves of a MIDI keyboard. And if I press alt to select a different channel, I'm going to select a piano or maybe just another instrument, a synth. That's quite nice. So what we have here is an octave down and up and an octave down and up. So this key here is the same as this key here. So although there are technically four octaves visible, you only get three at any one time. To navigate to higher and lower octaves, you simply use the grid button. Simple. From here, you can play chords and melodies or there are some other fun features. So if you press the select dial in, you can change the layout. So you can select a different key and then everything you play 
will be in the scale of the key you have selected. To select a different root note, you press shift and use the grid button to change which key your song is in. It can be a little bit different getting used to playing on this keyboard, but I've actually found that it's really, really enjoyable and quite fluid. It's nothing like a MIDI keyboard. It's expressive and creative in different ways. The next mode is drum mode. So if you press drum here, it will open up this layout. And this is representing the FPC bank A and bank B. So we have the classic 16 pad layout. Now you can have it on the left or by pressing the selection encoder, you can center. I'm probably just gonna keep it on the left because I'm used to that. And as well as the FPC, we also have a slice X mode. I'll link a video just here, which is specific to slice X. And then we have an omni channel where you can demo everything in your project. So with the FPC layout selected, we have control over any FPC we have in FL Studio. I've just opened one that I have loaded with one of my kits and it can sometimes be a much more expressive way of drumming. I tend to use the FPC when I wanna do stuff that's a little bit more groovy, a little bit more swung than the sort of locked in step mode. However, if you want to add some swing to the step mode, you can simply just go to the channel rack, add a little bit of swing here, really loosens everything up a bit. I covered browser mode in the overview and it really was that simple. You'd simply just press browser mode and then you use the selection encoder to navigate through your samples and sounds and VSTs. You can go into your folders and when you're in the right folder, you can just use this grid button to audition the sounds. When you're happy, you select again, rotate through this menu and press open in new channel. Let's look at performance mode. This lets you launch MIDI and audio in real time. My project here has been made ready for performance mode. For more information about how to set up a performance mode project, please check the video in the description. In performance mode, we can navigate through our clips using the selection encoder. And here I'm gonna select the sound effects and the pad to start off with. And when I press play, it will be looping around. Now I can introduce more clips and you'll see that they turn white to show that they're active. The kick, hi-hats, claps. You can turn off clips by selecting an empty pattern or by pressing the mute and solo buttons. Let's add a bass line. If you navigate through to the user banks, you can assign these to any parameters you like. I've assigned this volume dial to the tempo and I can manipulate the tempo in real time. 